Finally, I think we got this working. Can everybody hear me out there? I'm 10 News Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins. We're just going to jump right into it right now. Let me get your uh, questions up here so I can see all of that. I appreciate everybody's patience tonight. We have some software issues. Uh, couldn't get it up and running. Uh, so finally, I think everybody's coming on board and you can hear me now. Thank goodness, right? Okay, so we had a uh, pretty good change in the forecast models for today. Uh, not only in track, but also in intensity, and that's why a lot of you have been out shopping today, and a lot of folks are out shopping for tonight. I'm going to give a, a 30 more seconds here for people to jump on board, and then I'll get started. But bottom line is, uh, we've got a, a strong uh, system headed our way, potentially, to the state of Florida. Right now, it's only about 80 mile per hour winds. It became a hurricane today, the second hurricane of the Atlantic season. Barry was the first one. Uh, but it became that hurricane as it was moving over top of St. Croix and St. Thomas today. In fact, Buck Island is an island just south of St. Thomas. Uh, we had wind gusts of 110 miles per hour there, and sustained winds were generally in the 80s and 90s is what we we're seeing from that location. But here's the good news. I mean, it, it did get over parts of eastern parts of uh, Puerto Rico. However, it just kind of skirted the island. And for all of those islands right now, the weather is getting better. The storm is moving away moving to the northwest at 13 miles per hour and it's going to continue that trek for the next 24 hours or so so all right we got everybody here glad to see everybody here let's talk about it right here's the latest look you got a, we got a radar picture a decent radar picture look at the eye on this thing guys a very small storm in fact let me stop it i'll even measure it for you that most of the storm is only about 100 miles wide that's tiny i mean florida is 130 miles wide Right, so that that's a very small storm. That's one of the downsides of forecasting. These things can ramp up and fall apart quickly, and in this case, ramped up pretty quickly, and in the extended forecast, calling for it to continue to ramp up a little bit. So, uh, a lot, actually. So, here's where we're looking at right now. You can see the path that went across Barbados. Uh, right now, the storm is, let's see, I'm, if you're joining me from elsewhere, I'm based out of uh, Tampa, Florida here. It's uh, 1,200 miles uh, southeast of Tampa, Florida at this particular point. So it's a ways out there, but the timing looks like that. It is going to be uh, towards Florida by Sunday of this coming weekend, Labor Day weekend, right? The 8 p.m. forecast update from the Hurricane Center just came out. It does not update the track at 8 p.m. We will get one at 11 p.m. So the track I'm going to show you is the same as it was at 5 p.m. this evening. The winds are 80 miles per hour. That's what. That's not new, but that's what they update at this time. Uh, and it's moving to the northwest at 13. The pressure has come down to 990 millibars. So that's a lower pressure, which is indicating that it's strengthening, which is probably going to be more than 80 mile per hour winds at the 11 o'clock update this evening. Now, here's the forecast for Thursday into Friday afternoon. It goes from a Cat 1 to a Cat 2 hurricane by Friday afternoon, well east of the Turks and Caicos and the southern Bahamas. I don't even think there'll even be any kind of tropical storm watches or warnings for those those areas. It's a small storm and it's going well out to the east. And then here is the all-important turn to the west. What does this look like? How long does it take? The latest forecast from the Hurricane Center essentially has a Category 3 hurricane with 115 mile per hour winds making landfall somewhere on the east coast of Florida, maybe all the way up to Georgia by Sunday morning, and then continuing off towards the west. You can see their center line there. Uh, remember though, the average forecast error that far out, that where you see the two, the category two, that's about 200 miles. So they could be off by 200 miles that far out, okay? so. I'll show you some models and they're starting to point in that direction, but let's just get prepared and not let, uh, let I just want to convey that there are going to be some changes to this forecast. It's, it's a scary looking forecast, I know. All right, so forecast models. First of all, look back up here. You can see they're in pretty good agreement all the way up, even through the turn. That's a pretty good agreement in forecast models there. They start to spread over here, but that, that's not before they get almost to the coast of Florida. So if we zoom in a little bit, you can see how tight, how tightly packed they are here. Sorry, I didn't mean to go in that, that close. Um, versus the spread that we're seeing in here. The spread really starts once it gets close to land. So that's a little more confidence in that. The Hurricane Center's forecast towards Central Florida could be more legit. Now, I've been doing this for years, and I will tell you, this far out, four and five days, 
you don't necessarily want it over top of you, but if it is over top of you, there are the odds are the forecast is going to change a little bit at least. So it's not a bad thing to necessarily have it over top of you right now because that means it may move one way or the other. Uh, so you see the modeling that's happening right there. The watches and warnings for Puerto Rico, uh, for the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands, all have been dropped. Weather's getting better there uh, and will continue to improve overnight tonight. And I mentioned no other watches and warnings in effect at this particular point. Now, the probability of seeing tropical storm force winds, this is coming up. And what I want to show you first is the timing of those winds. And so you can see here along the coast near Melbourne, that's Sunday morning around 8 o'clock in the morning, most likely arrival of times, okay? And then if you're over in the Tampa area, it's Sunday afternoon, so somewhere in the middle, Polk County, you know, midday, Sunday. That's the timing right now. And this, this too, will likely change. Now, the probability, I'll just show, show you this a little bit easier for you to see. It's closer to 60% chance now that Tampa sees winds anywhere from 39 to 73 miles per hour. Now, the hurricane force wind probability is starting to enter the picture as well, too. And right now in the Tampa area, that is about, I think, 15%, yeah. So 25, almost 30% over on the East Coast now. 30% you get up towards Melbourne, Cocoa Beach area. All right, so that's what we're, that's the, the probability, that's where we're kind of looking at right now. Now, let's talk. A little bit about models. Now, I want to caution you here because this is just one model run. This is the European. You've, you've heard us talk about this a lot. I'm going to run it all the way out in the time. And now we're out through Saturday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. Now, it's lowered the pressure. It's strengthened it. It is still a small storm. It's maybe 100, 150 miles wide. So if it does come on shore, it's going to be a small area that has the highest winds and damage. Uh, but, yeah, you know, Watch this trap. Through the northern Bahamas, Sunday morning, 6 a.m. Monday, that's Sunday night, 11 p.m., midnight, West Palm Beach to Fort Myers by Monday afternoon. So Sunday night into Monday, going across South Florida, then coming out and coming up. Now, this is one model run. You know, Andrew was small. Andrew did something similar. It was a little further to the south. And then uh, I saw this run come in this morning, I was, this afternoon. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to see this. Right now, the, the forecast is for about 115 mile per hour winds, and there will be some weakening. But, guys, that's one model. When we go back here, that's like saying one of these lines. I just showed you one line across the bottom here. Look at all these other lines that are going further up to the north. One's even trying to recurve it. Okay, now let me go show you another model. This is the GFS model. Uh, I'm going to run this out to Saturday midday. GFS is a little weaker with it. That's Sunday midday. It's approaching Cape Canaveral, Daytona Beach, Sunday night. It's Monday morning, 2 a.m. So overnight, Sunday night to Monday, the GFS is taking it further to the north. It's a little weaker. It's affecting Jacksonville during the day on Monday trying to recurve a little bit in the Georgia, Savannah, and then eventually it actually kind of pushes it in inland and will fall apart pretty quickly. So there's your, there's your, so you've got one here up near Jacksonville. You've got one headed down towards West Palm Beach. It is too early to say which one's going to be right if either of those. The H-Wharf is a pretty good model as well, too. Uh, let me see if I can get the H-Wharf on here for you. Uh, and it... There we go. It actually kind of splits the, the uprights. It goes in, right in between. The data was just coming in. Let me run out and see how far we can go. Uh, you're looking at a couple different things here. Ah. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you because the data is just coming in. Let me refresh this just to make sure I've got it all. Just since I got Okay, here we go. So here we go. The data is coming in. Now, the H wharf is back up towards Cape Canaveral. This is Sunday night into Monday morning, overnight. Landfall near Cape Canaveral, right over the Cape, and then comes almost due west across towards uh, Hernando, maybe Citrus County. Guys, this latest run that just came in is further north than what it was yesterday or the last run, the prior run before that. So it's trending a little bit further to the north. The GFS is to the north a little bit as well. The European, the one I just showed you, that actually flipped and went south today. Not flipped, but it just went a little bit further to the south. So just so much uncertainty, and I hate, I hate doing that. I hate saying, like, we just don't know. But, guys, 
that's the God's honest truth. Uh, we've got a lot to look at right now, and I want to show everything out on the table for you so you can kind of get an understanding of what we're looking at. Now, the men and women of NOAA and of the Air Force are out there right now flying around the recon, uh, getting fantastic data. We've got the G4 flying. That, that one's flying around the outside to measure all the atmosphere there. And that data goes into the model so we know what the atmosphere looks like ahead of it. What kind of atmosphere is Dorian rolling into at this point, right? Uh, and then we've got the other, the P3s and the uh, C-130s, they're flying right into the center of it. They're getting all of the data, where the center is, what the pressures are, what the wind speeds are inside. And that's going into the models as well, too. We need to know where that center is so that when we tell the model to start running, we say, hey, model, here's where the center, the lowest pressure is. If that's off. I mean, look, this thing was supposed to go west of Puerto Rico. Remember that? The other day it was coming in between Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. It went barely to the east of Puerto Rico. So, you know, what is that? That right there, just in a couple days, is off over 100 miles in a, in a two-day forecast, two-and-a-half-day forecast. So things can change. And when you start looking at that scary thing coming towards Florida, you know, we're talking four-and-a-half four days out at this particular point. Now, here's one thing I will show you. Here's the shear forecast. And the shear forecast is going to lighten up a little bit. And that's why you see it strengthening from a two, one to a two to a three and then pushing onshore. Okay, that's the Hurricane Center track, and I just kind of overlaid it with the wind shear. Plenty of warm water. This is the water that uh, essentially is warmer than normal. So yeah, you've got a little bit of cooler than normal water right in here, but not a lot. Uh, the storm's sitting down here now, and this area in here is where it's going to be warming up. Uh, so this is warmer than normal. All of it and some of this is, is cooler than normal, but all of it is above like 83, 85 degrees. Plenty of warm water for fuel. That's what feeds hurricanes. And so there's, there's uh, lots of fuel underneath it, light shear up above it. It's in a position to strengthen pretty, pretty good. All right, now what's steering it? So we've got this high pressure out to the east. It's backed off a little bit, and that's why it's gone a little further to the east, and it's coming further to the north. Now, uh, it did not get disrupted by land, so it didn't even really, the center didn't go over the mountains of even Puerto Rico. If anything, you want it over uh, Hispaniola because those mountains are taller and that would knock it out. Uh, but that has not happened, so now what happens, now that it's in the Atlantic, we watch this high pressure push back to the west, and that's going to cause that turn. And then eventually that turn pushes it back up towards Florida. Now. If you've been paying attention to any Florida weather lately, we've had a lot of rain uh, in the first half of August. And one of the reasons why we had a trough in the eastern half of the United States is the northeast had pretty decent weather for the most part. So they've had some spells. Um, in this case, that will not be the case. You see this little nose, if you will, coming over here? Uh, this, the high pressure is building over top of this. Instead of there being a trough like this that would kind of suck it up and out, that's not going to happen. High pressure is going to build in. The center will actually be up over New England, but there'll be a high sitting here. Instead of the storm coming up and out, it's going to hit that and come over. That's what the forecast looks like that. That's why. Uh, will that timing be the same? That's what we're waiting to see. Okay, so bottom line, thank you guys, number one, for tuning in tonight. We're glad you're paying attention. I hope this is helpful. Um, we know the storm is strengthened. It's now a Category 1 hurricane. We know it's forecast. At least the next 24 hours to go, to uh, 90 mile per hour winds for pushing cat two, okay? It should, a stronger hurricane is actually expected east of Florida over the weekend, Saturday. Now the hurricane threats are increasing for Florida. Those chances for tropical storm force winds are up to 60%. That's in Tampa, it's higher over on the east coast. I mean, I'm just talking west coast of Florida. Uh, and then uh, hurricane force winds are going up as well too. The timing looks to be Saturday morning on the East Coast, uh, excuse me, Sunday morning, sorry, Sunday morning on the East Coast of Florida, weather will really start to go downhill. Sunday during the day in the West Coast, things will slowly go downhill. So it's Sunday into Sunday night that's pushing across Florida. So that timing could change. Now, if that sticks, what you want to do and you want to get prepared is have everything done around your house by Saturday night. You want those shutters up by sunset on Saturday night. It's a lot easier to do things in the daylight around the house than it is at night. You want to bring in everything that can blow around the outside of your house, trash cans, lawn furniture. Some people will actually take uh, their uh, the blades, fan blades, if you have a fan out on the lanai. 
They'll take the blades off. That'll keep it from blowing around as much. Um, things like that. Trees trimmed. You know what I mean? You, Get your plan ready to go. Do you know if you're going to evacuate? Do you live in a mobile home? You need to evacuate if this comes this way. It's a big if. We still don't know, but these are things you have to consider when you're putting your plan together. All right, so have your plan. Know where you would go if you're asked to evacuate. Uh, on the West Coast here, this is not particularly a storm surge storm for us, which is fantastic news because it's coming from the east. In fact, it'll probably blow the water out of Tampa Bay. We'll have another negative storm surge, like what we did in Hurricane Irma a couple years ago. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we will have to watch the backside of the storm as it moves. If it comes all the way across Florida straight uh, and then gets back up uh, and starts to re reform, then we'll have to watch it just for a minor surge on the backside. I don't think that's a big deal for Tampa at this particular point. But we're going to have to watch it, guys. Look, look, just looking at this right now, this is a much more healthy storm. Look at all this uh, radar this, this radar return on the left side. There's a lot more sitting out here. So you're getting really concentric now at this point. Right? Good center, good eye in there, nice eye wall. Yeah, it's, uh, it's doing its thing. It's easier for small storms to do this, and this one's taking advantage of that for sure. Okay. Sorry I talked all along. I do want to get you uh, some questions answered if I can. Um, what is that phone number, guys? Do you got the phone number that people can text? If you are watching from the Tampa area, we, what we have done here is we've created a text solution where what you do is text TROPICS, T-R-O-P-I-C-S, TROPICS, to this number. And I'll type it out here too. 727. Let me do this. 727. Uh, 945 6606. And I'm going to put what you need the text in there too. Tropics. Okay, that's what you want to do. And what you're going to get in return, if you're in Florida, especially in the Tampa area, are some links texted back to you. You can click quickly on those links, and it's going to take you to our hurricane page, where, and it's built for your phones, so you can just scroll right down on your phone, uh, where you can see the forecast models. These models right here, you're going to be able to see that graphic, and it constantly updates whenever we get anything in there. You're going to see the track, uh, the hurricane forecast track, this one, a little zoomed out version of that one. Okay, you're going to get that. You're also going to get links to evacuation routes. Uh, also, uh, storm surge. And again, storm surge is not an issue for this at this particular one. But we are going to also give you links to the local counties, the people you can get in touch with, all that kind of information that you're going to need. We're trying to make this as simple as possible to get information to you. Okay, so I, I recommend it. It's not selling you anything. I mean, it's free. You don't have to do anything. Um, but it will definitely help you out, I think, if you're trying to wonder what to do. There, there will be links on our YouTube page as well, too. We've got a tremendous amount of videos that we paste, posted on YouTube that kind of tell you. They're short videos, 30 seconds apiece, something like that. And they kind of say, here's what you can do to help this. If you're going to evacuate and you don't, you think your refrigerator, you might lose power. And you're, you can't, when you come back, you don't know if you did lose power because the power's back on. But how do you know if your refrigerator, all the food went bad because it thawed out, right? Tips like that how to prepare your family, what you need in your hurricane kit, all that kind of stuff. We've got YouTube videos that we've made for that. So highly suggest that as well, too. My Facebook page is Bobby Deskins. I'll be putting posts there, graphics all the time, you know. And, of course, right here on the 10 News uh, Facebook page, we're going to keep you updated. And uh, we'll be streaming this stuff on YouTube. We have a 10 News page for that as well, too. So, all right, let me get some... Uh, some uh, some questions out of here. What do you think about Lakeland? Too early to say, Lori, about what it is, but, you know, I mean, Cat 2 hurricane winds, I mean, that you're talking 100, 110 mile per hour winds are possible. I can't really go down and go from city to city of what the winds would be like because we, I, it's going to change. I mean, I can tell you looking at this, that Category 2, 100 mile per hour winds, I mean, you should be able to know that that's over Polk County. And that you could see 100 mile per hour winds over Polk County just looking at this. So very important when you do your hurricane preps, know where you are on a map. All right, be able to find your house on a map.
because that's going to help you when you see I mean what we deal in here is maps right and so when I show you these things it's going to help you a whole lot if you know where you are on that map so figure that out and then when we get closer to the event we're going to tell you and we'll show you models of how much wind and how much rain on average you get something like this pushing over you you're going to end up with maybe six to eight inches of rainfall okay now keep in mind this is a small storm so you know 100 miles is maybe from you know citrus to southern sarasota you know i mean that's that's the center part of the state there's not going to be a whole lot more the highest winds are going to be in the center remember charlie charlie was actually kind of a small storm but the highest winds in charlie were only about eight to ten miles wide and if you went to Punta Gorda after the storm, that's where you saw the damage, right there, 8 to 10 miles wide swath. This likely will be something like that as well, too, but we'll just have to wait and see. You know, We have to see if it wants to grow some more. Uh, we just don't know at this particular point. Uh, yeah, thank you, Megan, for passing that number on again. Yeah, text tropics to it. All right. All right, guys, questions. Let me see if we can get some more. Bonnie's on the East Coast. Yeah, we have seen stuff, you know, I've seen lots of pictures already today of uh, the, the uh, stores, shelves are already empty. Remember, look, you've got clean water at the house. You don't need to go out and buy a ton of bottled water. You've got water in your tap. If you've got water bottles, you've got things you can store. Now, that's for drinking water, right? Uh, if the storm does come here and you're going to use water for, like, flushing the toilet, that type of thing, you want to fill up your bathtub, but you don't do that until just before the storm gets here. And, and yeah, be really careful if you have little kids in the house. You don't want a bathtub full of water just sitting there and they, they get wandering around, the real little ones. That's, that can be really dangerous. What if it's like Michael? Ah, oh, Deborah, we just don't know. You, you, you know, you can't speculate like that. Uh, Miami, still don't know. You know, the center could go over Miami. Uh, and the models are trending north of Miami at this particular point, but it could be the same thing. Boynton, same thing. Okay, guys. Um, again, I can't. I see everybody's just asking about their specific specific town. Um, I mean, you should be able to tell from this um, map right here. And then look at this one. Actually, will help you where the tropical storm force winds are expected the most. Uh, that's that's a good one as well too. And again, the timing would be Sunday morning on the east coast, Sunday afternoon on the west coast. That kind of gives you a, a little bit better idea, really, of uh, what to expect. Pans of water, that's right, you can uh, make ice, put ice in Ziploc bags, or water <laughs> in Ziploc bags, and put that in your freezer, uh, bef you know, before the power, a day or two before you think you're going to lose power. And then they become ice, and then if you do lose power, they actually become a little bit more of like a cooler, and you, you've got some ice in there. And that water will melt, and it's clean water. You can drink it out of a Ziploc bag, because you got it from the clean tap before you put it in there. So it's another way of storing water if, you, if you're thinking about that. Generators. If you have generators, make sure they're ready to go. Make sure you know how to work them now. You know, if this does end up coming our way, it's not a time to learn how to work a generator and where to put a generator. You don't put it in the garage. And carbon monoxide is a major, major issue with that. So you need to be very, very careful. No problem, Deborah. I hope you have a good one. Is a cat two or three severe enough to evacuate? Uh, Marley depends. Depends on where you are. I mean, if you're in a mobile home, yeah. yeah. Even a tropical storm is probably not safe to be in a mobile home. Certainly, Category 1 hurricane. Um, so, yeah, all of that will come in time. If we're going to get hurricane watches, tropical storm watches, something like that, they will likely get here late Friday or Saturday morning. Probably Friday, during the day on Friday. So not tomorrow, but the next day. And that's going to make a lot of folks sit up and really pay attention when that happens. Um, and then we'll have details on evacuations. Right now, what I say about this is, we all, we've been saying this for years, guys. You run from the water, you hide from the wind. If you're not asked to evacuate because you're in a mobile home and because you're not going to get flooding either from a flood-prone area or from storm surge, which this is not a storm surge issue for Tampa area for the most part, um, you need to just hunker down, hide from the wind. If you're going to evacuate, go tens of miles, not hundreds of miles. You know, you don't want to be stuck in traffic all that time. You want to be safe. You don't want to be on the road. It's just not safe to be on the road, especially the longer you go. So you do want to be uh, being safe at wherever you go, and you want to have that plan now. That's that's what you plan everything out for already. What do we need to expect for Pasco County, Chelsea? I guess you just joined in. I I can't tell you that right now, guys. Uh, again, you know. 
you have to just look at the data. Anything I tell you right now would be complete speculation. Um, 100 mile per hour winds Polk County, 80 mile per hour winds in Tampa. That's what I would say right now. Uh, 115 mile per hour winds over on the East Coast. So that's just looking at this forecast. This is coming from the National Hurricane Center. That's what they're forecasting at that particular point. That's the best thing to go by at uh, this particular time. So Orlando, Dada wants to know, you know, 110 mile per hour winds. According to this, this is four days out. It's going to change, okay? And then the highest winds that you see here, so you see 115 Sunday p.m., 100 uh, Monday p.m. right over central Florida. That's going to be a small area around the eye wall that's seeing those winds. Areas outside of that 10, 20, well, 20, 30, 40 miles are not going to see winds that high. So keep that in mind. It's a small area that sees those highest winds. Want to know to cancel Bradenton Beach? Nah, I don't, I don't know if I can say that. I mean, you're just going to have to watch the forecast and figure that one out. Are there any more waves coming off of Africa? Have not even looked at this particular point, to be honest with you. I will check on that later tonight. Uh, yeah, Keeney, you're right. I'll definitely let you know. I'll stay, uh, get you guys updated. And, I mean, that's that's what we do. We want to make sure everybody's okay about this. and. You know, not get too too scared about it right right now. Just get prepared just in case. I mean, that, that's that's the thing that you really need to do now. Um, and hopefully it'll change. I mean, if this trend for the GFS happens and it goes further north and you're in the Tampa area, I mean, we have a nice day. Sunday, Monday, we a nice Memorial Day or Labor Day weekend, right? Wouldn't be for Daytona and for Jacksonville, but that's if the models trend in that direction. So we'll just we'll have to see what they uh, what they are doing. Here's again a latest look at those models right now. So. There is a little bit of a trend there, um, so we shall see. And I hate to admit it, I was talking to uh, the chief meteorologist, Tim Deegan, up in uh, Jacksonville today on a conference call. It's our sister station up there, and I said, you know, Tim, I hate, I hate to wish it on him, because I don't wish it on anybody, but uh, he was talking about the trend maybe coming more with the GFS and going further north, uh, and then that would be a, a better case scenario for us here in Tampa. So we would hope for Tampa's sake that that happens, but, uh, you know, Cape Canaveral northward, St. Augustine, ah, man, you don't want to have that. Okay, guys, thank you very much for joining. I'm so glad that you guys did. You even stuck out this long. Uh, share this with your friends and family, and don't forget to like my page, Bobby Deskins, my weather page, uh, so you can get more updates. And if you like it, it actually will uh, update you. Facebook will let you know the next time we do live videos and post stuff. Take care out there. If you've got questions, I'll keep continuing to look at this. Um, and don't forget to turn in, tune in to 10 News tonight at 11 o'clock. We're going to have the very latest. I mean, this all comes in last minute <clears throat> where you've got all this data coming in around 1045 maybe even 1050 1055 uh, and we're on at like 1058 11 o'clock so we definitely uh, are going to have the latest track for you at 11 o'clock that is going to be the big news which way has it shifted if anything and what are the models trending okay so get to, uh, get your family prepared don't panic at this particular point stay aware you're doing a good job by listening to this right here uh, and, and have fun. Uh, enjoy, you know, try and relax a little bit out there. I know it's a little stressful. All right, guys.